Hello my friends and welcome back to the Aragon Offensive Deployment video. It is episode 50 of my Panzer Corps 2 campaign. And the first thing that we want to note about this map is that it is tiny and we have 28 turns. So you just know that the fighting is going to be super ugly. Um, if you take a measurement of front line to objective, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. We're only seventeen hexes away from the furthest objective. And we have twenty eight turns. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, you know it's just gonna be super ugly. Right, now the first thing that I wanna do. Is if I um, remove every move everything to the reserve, and then I'm pretty sure that these are uh, okay. This is just a unit that I bought, but never used. No, I did use that. I wanted to see how much prestige I actually really have. So I'm just getting rid of all of the stuff that I bought as a prestige sink. Disbanding this should also um, put the spares back in my pool. Okay, so here's my giant investment in anti-aircraft guns. Where's the other one? Okay, there, there they are. They're at the bottom. So, yeah, I just... What's the shortcut is delete? Okay. Yes. 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 I'm not sure if this is arguably any quicker. I just really wanted to get an appreciation for just how much money I'm sitting on. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting on 20,000 prestige. Not even an exaggeration. 20k. Wow. All right, let's have a look at what resources we have available. So, <clears throat> nothing new for this mission. Not a single new unit. So there's nothing to upgrade to. <clears throat> we have prototype Italian anti-aircraft that's not really very useful to us it's also only like ever so slightly better than um our prototype Italian tanks as well this is actually a fantastic tank it has 18 infantry attack it ignores entrenchment and it has bunker killer uh, but the problem is is that it's Italian so I can only deploy it so far as I know, I can only deploy it as an auxiliary. Now, if I do want an auxiliary infantry barbecue machine, then, uh, you know, it is nice to have one available. But just unfortunate that my recent prototypes have been auxiliary units and not very useful ones. Okay, and then we have all our captured gear, which uh, there's nothing new or exciting about this. Right, okay. 20,000 prestige. Isn't that crazy? Right, let's... Uh, put the money back into storage. 
I forgot you can do this. I genuinely forgot that you could do this. So nine of them is worth uh, 7,200. Yeah, I'll just buy a load and then reserve them. Let's buy a load more and reserve those two. That leaves me with 7,000 prestige, which is still quite a lot. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to buy... some spare fighters, I guess. Actually, I don't really know if I need to do anything else. Let me just uh, st stow some more money. Let's go with uh, another four, right? All right, that'll do. Don't forget that I can sell these at any time. Okay, so. First things first, we have an evil 15 strength aircraft here. I'm sure the aircraft are going to be a huge problem in this campaign. I'm actually genuinely not sure what to put this uh, field repairs on right now. I think cheap replacements for the AA gun makes sense. Put field repairs on the artillery because the artillery has limited re replacements and field repair actually repairs without using replacements. So I did mention this trick before. If you have a prototype unit and you don't have any spares for it, Field repair will actually slowly heal it up to whatever its overstrength strength is. In fact, I believe that you can make replacements out of nothing using field repair, which is a really interesting exploit. You simply set the unit to 15 overstrength, even though you don't have, you know, more than X many uh, units. And uh, so, say you've only got seven left. So you overstrength it to 15 or whatever, and you put field repair on, and during the mission it will repair up to 15. So you can actually get a limited number of replacements back. Just something interesting to keep in mind. Right, anyway. I'm not sure about the light anti-aircraft guns, but they're only one... They're only one slot each. This is like, you know, this is a super tight mission. This, this is, you know, we're really locked in with the enemy here. So I figure... I've got two airports, but they are interfering with each other. Um, oh, I forgot to sell this. So this actually hasn't got any experience. <laughs> So I do have more than 20k. Um, let's go with... Let's take this across and upgrade it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
I get the feeling that this is going to be one of these missions where it makes sense to uh, let's disband this. It's not. I don't need that. Um, it's going to be one of these missions where it makes sense to uh, deploy a lot of auxiliary fighters. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm going to need any scout planes, really, because I mean this is such a tight mission. Got one, two, three, four, five. There's a lot of airports around as well. This is definitely a mission where the slow, powerful units are going to be most useful. This is this Panzer 2A which has got rapid fire. Rapid fire but not really fantastic stats. Ugh. Not really sure how I feel about that. Let's get these tanks deployed. And let's take this. This and this. This is probably doesn't need to be overstrengthed. Right, we're going to want some 15 centimeter guns. Okay, all right. This guy has a medal. Um, let's unassign this hero. I'm going to want more than one artillery, for certain. The question is, what do I make cuts on? I think maybe I'm going I'm going overkill on the uh, anti-aircraft here. Let's cut that in. Okay, so I'm just looking at a balanced force once again. I'm always using my least experienced units because, you know, I'm trying to bring up as many experienced units as I can. You know, we're at the start. We are still very much at the start of a very long grand campaign and... As the grand campaign drags on and the amount of units that we deploy uh, increases, we're going to want experienced units that we can draft in. Even if they're just one star, even if they're just one and a half star, you know, anything's better than fresh units. At least we do have this double experience point, Sky. I think my artillery is going to be very busy. Let's see if we can get some experience on it. I usually find that artillery levels very quickly, but this one has not done so. So, yeah, it makes you wonder what the most efficient way is to use a double experience guy. Part of me thinks it's to put it on a recon car and then convert it because of the rate that recon cars gain experience.
But this guy has Survivor, so I don't really want to change him. I think it would be wise to actually put Fast Learner on this guy. Let's just try and bring him up as fast as we can. Okay, let's get deploying. So one thing that we should obviously do is just deploy our anti-aircraft gun in the face of the enemy here. Do you know what? I could put the other one here. Both of them would be able to hit that fire. Let's go with you here. And you here. No. You have to go over here, actually. Because I've only got one real airport. Uh, okay. I'm not sure where to put this cheap little anti-aircraft gun. I guess here would be okay. Now we need to back up our anti-aircraft positions with artillery. So my main issue here is I don't have my own infantry. I could buy some. I could buy some auxiliary infantry. Just to have on the high ground or around it to defend my artillery. Okay. Slow ass T26s need to be on the front line. Okay, the old infantry hose machine. This has been a surprisingly effective tank. I'm just putting it in the river tile here. I'll get to move first. And I have Master of Blitzkrieg, so I should be able to move very quickly. Set up here and see if I can hose down some of this infantry. Let's set the other tank here. I guess we'll put one scout car here and the other two on the road. Okay, it seems like a reasonable setup. Now where we need to fill in with auxiliaries is I need... I need at least two sets of infantry. Because I've identified these high ground positions need to be defended. And I cannot rely on the Spanish to do it. So I need my own. I need my own infantry to do it. In fact, what might be wise is for me to deploy the infantry here on the river. That way they're already on the river tile and can push forward straight into these positions. My tanks will be much more uh, expedient at crossing the river. And then, of course, we have some very hyper-aggressive, hyper-nasty um, enemy fighter plane. Now, what I'm going to do here is I am going to deploy some overstrength fighters because I am actually a little bit short on fighter deployment tiles. Although, I probably have enough fighter deployment tiles, like, I have enough air tiles probably to deploy all aircraft. But the thing is... This guy has got Consolidator and Avenger, so he's going to gain attack for losing strength. 
and he's already 15 strength. I'm going to want overpowered auxiliaries to actually do their best to power this guy down. Let's take one standard. And let's take one spy plane just to be... Just to have a spy plane available. What is the difference? Huh. This tactical is actually only one slot. <laughs> and it is actually a tactical. It does actually have uh, proper attack values. Isn't that funny? Huh. You know, there might be... There might be something to be said for having a, a one-slot tactical. Although... You know, the problem is forever going to be that with these low attack values, he's not going to be able to penetrate. As things go on, he's not going to be able to penetrate the armor of the enemy. Okay, and that is it. It's pretty much my usual setup, but the recon cars are in the center this time rather than on the edges ready to do reconnaissance for me. And the reason why is because the map is just so tiny. I think that this is going to be an extremely vicious and protracted fight. Because I can't imagine any other reason why I would be given so many turns to deal with such a tiny map. But my usual plan remains to shoot down the enemy air force as quickly as possible and establish air superiority. Then eliminate enemy infantry because it's not worth capturing. And obviously it's dangerous to someone who doesn't have any infantry of their own. And then we will consider what we can steal. If we steal anything. There will be something to be said for just trying to farm experience at the moment. But hey, anyway, that's it. Deployment complete. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Those of you who enjoy deployment videos. And we will be back next time to begin the mission.